Welcome in everyone to the One Piece discussion topic of Luffy's brand new powers. So, if you read the latest chapter of 1044, you must know that he has the human human fruit model sun god Nika. And today we are here to discuss his abilities and what he might be able to do in the near future. Alright, so in the latest chapter of One Piece, we see Luffy utilizing his awakened Zoan form. But when you think about a Zoan devil fruit, there's usually three stages to it. You have the base form, where you're still in your human body, but you add aspects of your Zoan devil fruit. Hence Luffy going into gear second, third, and fourth. And then you have the hybrid form, which is what Luffy is using in this chapter. You have the aspects of Luffy mixed in perfectly with the aspects of the Zoan Devil Fruit, hence Sun God Nika, hence the fire hair, the eyebrows, the eye changes, but he still has a lot of aspects which we can identify as being Luffy's base form. But now, this begs the question of if there is a third form to this as well, a full Zoan transformation into Sun God Nika, a form where if he were to go into it, we would not recognize him as Luffy anymore. I'm curious because usually, when you think of a Zoan Devil Fruit user, the hybrid form is typically the strongest transformation a Zoan user can turn into, so it really begs the question of, does Luffy even need a full Zoan transformation to fully become Sun God Nika? We see Kaido in the latest couple of chapters stay in his full Zoan form, but when you really think about it, there's a lot of benefits towards Kaido being in his dragon form. He can fly around, he can cover a vast amount of area, and if he was in his hybrid form, he wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm wondering if there are benefits to Sun God Nika's full transformation that we're just not seeing yet. But that's besides the point. Today, we are here to discuss Luffy's hybrid form and what it has shown us in the latest chapter. All right, so at the start of chapter 1044, when Luffy finally transforms into his awakened Zoan form, we see black lightning coming out left and right, conquers hockey going berserk. And here's the thing, here's the catch. Luffy isn't even fighting anyone. He is straight chilling on the rooftop and Conqueror's Hockey is emitting from his body left and right. What this is telling me is that moving forward, there is a good chance every single one of his attacks will be imbued with Conqueror's Hockey. I really wish we got to see Luffy throw a punch in this chapter, because if he were to throw a punch towards Kaido, then we could confirm this theory. But this is kind of what I'm leaning towards right now. And now moving on to the fight with Kaido, when he grabs Kaido, Kaido is so shocked you see the eyes pop out of his head. Here's the thing though, I cannot tell if this is a stylistic choice from Oda saying, oh, Kaido was just very surprised because nobody has ever done this to him. I would assume, right? Nobody can just grab Kaido and squeeze him and bring him to the rooftop. That is some bleach type-ish right there where Ichigo just grabs Aizen and just shoots him away. And he's like, whoa, like what the heck is happening here? That is Kaido's reaction. So I cannot tell if Luffy is turning Kaido into a cartoon or if Kaido is just inherently shocked by Luffy's newfound capabilities. And here's the thing, when Luffy goes down to grab Kaido with his giant gear third arm, he doesn't shout gear third. He doesn't blow steam or air into his hand. He can just do it. His transformations are now instantaneous. Gear fifth is the perfect blend of all of the previous gears. So, once Luffy grabs Kaido and brings him up to the rooftop, he starts twirling him around like a wet towel. And here's the thing, we see the cartoon eyes yet again coming out of Kaido. You do it once, and it might be a stylistic choice. When you do it twice, there might be a hidden connotation behind that. And the Gorosei even mention that the Warrior of Liberation has creative freedom. His powers knows no bounds. It is the most ridiculous ability out there. And what would be more ridiculous than having Kaido being turned into a Looney Tunes-esque character, having Looney Tunes abilities being able to work on him. That is exactly what's happening right now. And Luffy's having a hoot and holler about it. He is laughing left and right about what is happening. So in my mind, what I see and what I think is going on is that whatever would make Luffy laugh would work on Kaido. If Luffy thinks it's funny, then that attack or ability will work and that's what we're seeing right now he even puffs up his arms really big like and then he starts throwing kaido back and forth as well slamming him into the ground relentlessly and after he does that guess what luffy does he stops and he has a good laugh about it and the thing that really sets me off about this looney tunes theme is what happens later kaido shoots a bowl of breath at luffy luffy using his awakening using those gear third puffy arms brings up the ground and transforms it into rubber. But here's the thing, 
Normally, a Zoan user, uh, an awakened Zoan user, should not be able to affect the objects and items around him. But Luffy does that right here. He turns the ground into rubber. And what happens now? The bowl of breath hits it, and it gets bounced back, redirected at Kaido. Rubber cannot do that. Rubber cannot blast back fire. It has no properties that would relate to that, that would give it that ability. So Luffy right now is using some cartoon-esque ability to shoot that bowl of breath right back at him. It is not rubber. Rubber does not take fire on well at all. And that is why previously, whenever Luffy got hit with a bowl of breath, Luffy was burned to a crisp. Do you remember that? Chapter 1042, that is what happened to Luffy when he was in Gear 4, made out of rubber. So what we're witnessing right here with the ground being turned into rubber and shooting it back, we know that there's a hidden meaning behind that. And guess what happens? Just like all the other previous attacks that Luffy pulled off that should not be possible, Luffy starts laughing at it. He starts laughing at Kaido being hit by that attack. This, the connotations behind this are deep. And what I'm curious about is since Luffy can now activate these goofy abilities, now that he can have a good hoot and holler and turn the world around him into a cartoon-esque arena. And here's the thing, at some point, Oda has to draw the line and say, yes, Luffy can do this, but he cannot do this. This will affect him, this will not. And the reason I say that, and the reason he has to draw that line is because the series is not over. Luffy is gonna face a lot of threats in the future that are stronger than Kaido. And even Kaido right now has to push Luffy to the limits. Kaido has to take Luffy to the brink of defeat. But how do you do that against a cartoon character? And the reason I say that is because if you grew up watching old school cartoons like Tom and Jerry or anything else of that era, you know that the main character, the character that is being portrayed by Luffy's abilities right now, never loses. They always get away scot-free. So at some point, Oda has to draw the line on Luffy's capabilities. And here's a good example. Imagine an endgame fight like Luffy versus Blackbeard. And normally, we'd assume that they're pretty equal, right? We're gonna have a really good fight. It's gonna go on for a long time. They're pushing each other's limits. But imagine if all Luffy does is straight clown on the man for a couple of chapters. That would be interesting and fun, but it wouldn't be an intense battle. It wouldn't be a battle worthy of a final villain. So the people Luffy fights in the future have to be able to counteract Luffy's cartoon awakening in some regards. Alrighty, so now let's rewind it back a little bit and talk about Luffy's design. He is titled as the model of Sun God Nika. And with that, we see the sun on Luffy, hence his hair. His hair is on fire. Now, the fire attacks that he had in gear 2nd, 3rd, and 4th all make a lot of sense. We now know where that fire is coming from and how it's produced. Beforehand, we were like, yo, yeah, um, if rubber travels really fast, it creates a lot of friction and boom, there's fire. That might have been the case. But now that we know that he has the powers of Sun God Nika, we can say that that is truly where the fire is coming from. And you don't earn a name like Sun God Nika if you cannot use a lot of fire-based attacks. And here's the thing. One thing I find peculiar about that title is that he's not called Rubber God Nika. He's not called Stretchy Nika. He is called Sun God Nika. We can assume that there's a whole plethora of abilities that Luffy can be able to use now that are all fire-based. And here's something cool as well to keep in mind. But do you remember the fight against Ace versus Blackbeard where Blackbeard had this giant ball of darkness and then Ace had the sun behind him? He was like, hey, who's gonna win? Your darkness or my sun? And then they clash and then Ace lost? Now, imagine if Luffy were to do the same thing. Blackbeard having his ball of darkness, and then Luffy having the sun from Sun God Nika behind him saying, hey, who's gonna win? Your darkness or my rubber sun? And a really cool thing to make note of as well is that it doesn't have to be just a giant ball of fire like Ace did. It can be more than that. It can be this cartoony-esque fire sun. It could be a giant ball of rubber that's on fire. There's a lot of possibilities with Luffy's brand new attacks. So now, moving back onto Luffy's design for a minute. First up is his brand new set of eyes. I'm curious to see if they have any ocular powers associated with it. 
If I had to take a guess in the One Piece universe as to what they might do, I would say it would be another advanced form of observation hockey. Instead of sensing it with your hockey, you can now see it directly with your eyes. You can see what your opponent might do in the future. You can see their powers and their capabilities just by looking at them. Or it could just be for design and to rival Imusama. But that's besides the point. Next up, we have the eyebrows, which a lot of people have made a weird note about, saying, oh my gosh, they're just like Sanji's. They are not like Sanji's, they are different from Sanji's because Sanji's both swirl in the same direction. This eye goes like this, this eye also goes like this. Luffy's eyes converge at the nose like a regular person's eyebrow, so I think it's just a design choice. Next up, we have the vapors that I've been mentioning around his arms. So if you look closely at chapter 1044, whenever we see Luffy, he is not necessarily touching the ground at any one point. So this leads me to believe those vapors are actually keeping him afloat. Just like in Gear 4, whenever Luffy transforms into Bound Man and he starts bouncing off of the ground, it gives me those kind of vibes. It looks like the vapor clouds are now doing all the work and are carrying him. And here's the thing, you could say, oh, well, maybe he still has to bounce off of the ground to do that. But whenever Luffy transforms into Snake Man, for example, he has like this weird like floating thing going on, right? The steam is kind of lifting him ever so slightly. So this leads me to believe that the vapor clouds around his arms are actually lifting him up like a, I don't know, levitating cape or something. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is how insanely strong Luffy has become just by being in this form. So when you read chapter 1044 and you see those last couple of pages, you understand, you must understand that Kaido got absolutely manhandled. And this isn't just some throwaway character. We're talking about Kaido, a Yonko of the sea, one of the strongest creatures alive, got manhandled by Luffy in Gear 5th. And you could make a couple of good arguments. You could say, well, Kaido was in his full zone form. He wasn't expecting Luffy to get back up. He was surprised by Luffy's attack. And that's all very fair and that's all very true. But you also have to remember how strong Luffy must be by landing those attacks, by being able to grab Kaido and bring him upstairs. Because beforehand, whenever Luffy was fighting Kaido's full zone form, he barely did a dent in the man. It did nothing but tickle the man. It didn't even sober the guy up. And now, skip like 40 chapter, or maybe not 40, skip 100 chapters later, and now you have Luffy twirling the man in the sky like it's nobody's business. The power scaling is insane right now, and I'm so excited to see what happens to the other members of the Straw Hat crew. Because beforehand, you had Luffy, you had Zoro, Sanji, and it was well-rounded. But now we have Sanji and Zoro and Jinbei, Yamato, and it's all pretty high, right? These are top tier fighters. But then all of a sudden, you have like this, this huge spike, and Luffy is at the pinnacle of it. The abilities this man is displaying are insurmountable and i just don't even know how to put it into words right now all right now with all that being said thank you guys so much for stopping by and enjoying this video and please let me know your thoughts down below as to what you think luffy is now capable of what can what can't he do what will his full zone form look like if we even see one let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section i love this part of one piece because right now the possibilities are actually endless we are only limited by her own creativity. And I'm excited to see what Oda will do with this in the near future. And who knows, maybe by the time we hit the next chapter, Luffy is pulling off a lot more ridiculous stunts, or maybe not, and he'll end up being capped off by Oda at some point. So now, the one question I wanna leave you guys today is what do you think about Luffy's Toon World? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Or do you think, no, this isn't happening? Because I've seen a couple of those comments. I've seen people denying the capabilities that Luffy has shown us in this chapter. And who knows, maybe I'm wrong. And I'm glad to admit it. If I'm wrong by next chapter, I will admit it. But right now, from what we have seen, it truly does look like an actual version of Toon World. One of my favorite arcs of Yu-Gi-Oh! and one of the few decks I actually own in real life because I love Yu-Gi-Oh! So anyways, that's besides the point. My name is Sai. I am signing out. Thank you for watching. Until next time, peace.